Apple quietly releases their own Proton, which this is this is actually absolutely amazing. I'm very excited about this. Apple announced a new game porting toolkit, which simplifies porting games by quickly translating Intel-based x86 instructions to Apple Silicon instructions and Windows APIs to the corresponding macOS APIs. The kit uses source code from Crossover, a Wine-based open source solution for running Windows games on macOS, first published in 2007. Developers will also be able to launch an unmodified version of a Windows game on a Mac and see how well it runs before fully porting a game, which is cool. Uh, the kit also allows DX12 Windows games to run on Mac devices. Diablo 4 and Elden Ring seem to run decently using this method, but other games like Cyberpunk 2077, which shouldn't be too surprising, ran slowly and with, again, unsurprisingly, a lot of bugs. Mac Gaming has started a collective effort to test an extensive list of popular titles and document how well they run using the new software. Uh, and the sheet is very easy to use and read, I will also say. According to GitHub senior dev advocate Christ, uh, Christina Warren, this is essentially Proton, but for Mac OS, this is massive. Apple has likewise announced its newest version of Mac OS, uh, Mac OS 14 Sonoma, which has a game mode that prioritizes game performance which is very, even, even considering the DX12 layer stuff, that part was very surprising to me because Apple has often been very weird about gaming. I mean, um, weird, I'd say questions. ignorant. Like, do you remember when they did that yeah, AR, yeah. that AR demo with, I think it was, <clears throat> oh man, what was the first iPhone with the 3D camera? But they, they, they had this game running on a tabletop and the developer was there, like, and it was, it, it kind of felt like, the I'm a Mac guy from the old commercials explaining video games to like his grandpa. Yeah. Like it just, I was, I was watching this, I'm like, they have no idea what's going on right now, do they? Yeah, it hasn't even been like an afterthought. It's it's often felt like they approach it with like disdain. Like it's, it's I, I don't know. This, this was very, very surprising to me. Honestly, when I saw the first article on this, I thought it was like a joke um well guess what but, uh, you were yeah, right it's exciting i used it today <laughs> oh um, is it that bad really okay it's complicated on the surface it's really cool but i think there's a reason and guys you're gonna want to check out the video um emily got it working on an m m1 ultra mac studio i think it was yeah i think it's an m1 ultra mac studio uh like a pretty a pretty kitted out mac and i got a chance to experience multiple games uh both ones that worked ones that didn't work ones that were running natively on mac and then the same game using this translation layer and what i can say more than anything else is that i understand why apple is messaging this the way that they are where they're saying this is not a tool for gamers to play video games this is a tool for game developers to use to develop their games but even then it's kind of uh, it's kind of complicated because Think about the issues. I mean, you did the Linux challenge with me. Think about the kinds of issues that you had running games. What percentage of the time was it actually just the fault of the Proton translation layer versus what percentage of the time was the problem some kind of redistributable dependency or anti-cheat or... Um, was massive, or yeah. some some difference in the expected even folder structure compared to the actual folder structure of the device that you're trying to run it on you know when it looks for you know some a dll or something like that that it goes looking for right so even if this proton compatibility layer worked perfectly how many games would actually be usable yeah, honestly, I'm mostly excited about this just because people that were going to just have a Mac anyways now have a more accessible way to approach a certain level of gaming. Um, like something that I immediately saw was that people were playing Diablo 4. Now, Diablo 4 is not exactly the like hardest game to run ever. Sure. Um, but but it means you have phones? if you have a MacBook, <laughs> if you, it means if you have a MacBook, you have a way to 
play some games with your friends. I, 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 I'm not like expecting this to be amazing. I wasn't immediately expecting a bunch of games to have like incredible performance or, or there to even necessarily be this like huge expansive sure. library of games. It's pretty but it does bad. give them access to more than what they had. Sort of. I mean, there are things that are... You, you, said, you said you tried it on M1 Mac. Have M1 you, Ultra. Is that... Top tier. M1 Ultra. Yep. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's... Man, it, see, it, this is tough. Coming back to the way that Apple's messaging it. So first of all, like I said, if... You know, your experience with Proton, with Linux, with Wine, is anything to go by. What do you think compatibility is going to look like? Probably not too great. Now, that has improved a lot. But we have to give credit to who for that. If you had to name one name, who do we give credit to for the improvements that we've seen over the last couple of years in Proton compatibility or in, in Windows games on Linux? And I guess I kind of spoiled the answer when I said Proton. Yeah, Valve. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be Valve. So wait, hold on a second. If it's Valve sitting there going, oh my God, developers are just not going to do this. Um, I guess we better go in and create hacky workarounds in order to get these games running on Proton. And then Apple is coming in saying, hey, uh, game porting toolkit is a tool for developers to port their games how involved do we really expect apple to be are they making a real investment here or are they basically just ripping some open source tools adding a little bit of their own stuff and the open source community is kind of not impressed with how little apple has contributed back to open source software and all of this apparently it's about 20 kilobytes of code which is like thanks that's not always how things work but i, I but am people are I am pretty mad their contribution is bad yeah, yeah i was they're, just they're gonna say like i i just wanted to say that's not like that alone is not indicative of of little contribution but i'm sure the contribution is little in this case the contribution's yeah. bad and they should feel bad and um yeah. so 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 apple's not going to be making the investments for game developers they're expecting game developers to do the work they're not making the investments in the underlying tech as far as i can tell they haven't uh, contributed any kind of significant um uh, they, they haven't contributed significantly to the open source projects that have made Proton possible. Uh, I, I, I am open to being corrected here, though. Of course, guys, let me know in the chat if that, if, if that is, a, is a misconception on my part. Um, and the fact that they're sitting there going, okay, yeah, this is a toolkit. Okay, so what is this exactly? Basically, Apple is what? Putting their shiny logo on open source tools that already existed. They have... They have created the translation layer for DirectX 12 to Metal. That is an actual Apple thing. But DirectX 9 to DirectX 11 is pretty much piggybacking off of existing projects. And then they're basically going, okay, now go port your games. Now, obviously, between Rosetta and between the game porting toolkit, you know, developers have more than they had before. But if they're basically going, yeah, game porting toolkit is a way to what? see your game running on a Mac and then what be inspired to create a native <laughs> port of the game. Like I, I, I'm skeptical. I absolutely was not aware that it was called game porting toolkit or that their approach was that they expected developers to use it as a way to make official ports of their game. All I knew was that you could run windows games on Mac, which I was all excited about. And I, I originally took this as a similar thing to, how they uh, launched the original watch and how I believe they're treating their headset, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, oh, we um, sure will. which is where it's like, it's like a, a demo of something that will hopefully be better later. But now I'm kind of, after this conversation, I'm, I'm losing hope. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, I the mean, specific quote, Developers will also be able to launch an unmodified version of a Windows game on a Mac and see how well it runs before fully porting a game. That's rough. Uh, I don't think very many people are going to fully port games. That's uh, also they... just not true because the vast majority of games that you buy these days are, for better or for worse, from game marketplaces. And we couldn't even get yeah. the Windows version of Steam running without some command line nonsense. Um, like it's ah, so 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 apple clearly 
has not oh. even gone as far as yo gabe we need to make sure the windows version of steam runs on uh the upcoming mac os for uh stuff and things can you uh you know uh leave your bunker in new zealand to maybe help us out with this type some type some codes Give us some ha hacker codes. Like, they, they didn't even go as far as to have a conversation with Valve, as far as I can tell, because if they had, this should be a more seamless experience. So I think Apple is basically going, yeah, gaming, woo, woo, gaming, woo. Okay, go for it. See you later. And you know what? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's not true. But given where Apple, given what motivates Apple, right? What motivates Apple? Let's, let's think about that. 30% cut on everything. That is a strong motivator for Apple. And it, if, you, yeah. if you think about that, all of a sudden, a lot of their decisions become really crystal clear, right? Why is it that they provide software support to the iPhone and iPad for you know, six, seven, eight years sometimes? Well, because every time you buy something on it, they get 30%. And if you aren't using that thing anymore, then there's a chance that you will use something else where they don't get 30% anymore. And to be clear, that's a good thing. That has, that has positive results for the oh, world. Yeah, people, people throwing their phones away less often is a good thing. And I have repeatedly applauded Apple's long-term software support for their products, especially compared to their competitors, right? But that doesn't mean that they did it out of the goodness of their hearts. And so if we, if we look at Apple's actions through that lens, that what actually motivates Apple lens, all of a sudden, all of this makes sense. Why is this a half-hearted effort? And what's really interesting is if we look at Valve and we look at their actions through that, hey, what do we actually care about? Right, getting 30% of a revenue cut on all yeah, transactions. Yeah. All of a sudden, their actions make sense too. So why is Apple heavily invested in mobile devices and mobile gaming in the App Store? Because they get 30%. Why is their motivation, or why is, the, why is their motivation so much lower on the Mac? Because they don't get 30%. Simple. <laughs> why is Valve highly motivated when it comes to Steam? 30%. Why is Valve's support for macOS kind of like, well, we tried, but overall pretty half-hearted because the game library just isn't there. So you're getting 30% of basically nothing. So it's like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. But they're not pushing it anymore. Not like they did back when they launched it. Like they seemed to be pretty bullish at the time. And since then, I, I haven't heard boo from Valve about gaming on Mac, Steam on Mac. It's been, it's been pretty quiet. So yeah. I, uh, this was another one. This was one of those ones where I, like you, heard about it through the grapevine because I was busy doing something else when the keynote was going on. I didn't watch it personally. I read the comments though. Um, so I was busy doing something else. So I heard about it and I went, oh yeah, that sounds freaking awesome. Let's start gaming on Mac. Only to be ultimately disappointed when I realized, no, this is, this is them, you know, giving you kind of a, a shovel and going, okay, uh, you know, dig to the center of the earth. Like, uh, yeah, sure. Um, with the way that, man, with the, with the motivation that you see from developers to even port their game properly to freaking Windows, right? Yeah. And we're talking porting <laughs> from the Xbox in some cases. Over the years, man. Which is like basically running Windows. Yeah. Or actually to a certain degree. Yeah. yeah. And when you so when you see that how unmotivated where they'll they'll go and they'll hire a third party to go and do it and that third party will ship some piece of garbage and they'll be like no oh, it seems good enough ship it um, obviously that's not every game developer and that's not every porting process sometimes they are porting from a more complicated architecture like a PlayStation 3 or something like that or even PlayStation 5 to a degree though in that case the hardware is pretty similar. Um, it's not every time but it happens often enough that i think if we're looking at apple's moves here and going yeah we're gonna see you know a full scale like migration to game developers taking the mac seriously i, I think we've got another thing coming i just don't think it's realistic